but they have a Christian duty to take care of the poor, those under them. Um, given the fact that we don't have, unfortunately, in the system, a natural aristocracy to rise up and take that mantle, um, but although there has been some discussion on that, uh, I personally would think then perhaps a, a Christian authoritarian or fascist system would be the best government for whites to live under. Because the thing is, the Kennedys and Senator McCain and the people of the Bill Gates of the world do not have the best interests of whites at heart, and I personally wouldn't let in to, uh, to our new republic, simply because they have done so much damage to whites and to every people around this globe by serving our international masters. So the best system would be one in which, while there are elites, they have a duty that's enforced by the church to take care of the poor. That's why I'm not a capitalist. I don't believe in capitalism. I think it's a naturally exploitative system. So the best system is where there is a synthesis through the lower classes and the upper classes that is mediated by the church. And I really think that that is the best system for a group of people to live under, as that is the government that God gave us. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you use the word the Israelites. Who, who are the Israelites? If you, if, you, if you could identify them today, who are they? What do they look like? Well, I mean, you look back in Scripture where uh, St. Paul is uh, mistaken for a, a Roman. I, uh, I, I would say they obviously are not European, but they uh, were of olive skin. You know, the problem is that the Israelite people, the Jews we have today, the Ashkenazis, are a subset of Judaism that converted uh, well after the death of Christ and after the temple is destroyed and the tribes were spread throughout the world I see a, a large uh, miscegenation issue in which most of the original tribes or all of them were simply bled into the areas where they decided to reside I mean southern Italy had uh, a large percentage of Jews that went and there isn't a Jewish population now not through persecution just through intermarriage and then the bloodline was destroyed so I would say that um, you know, it, it, it's a process where those people are really not around anymore. And you oh. look at uh, Revelations in chapter 6, it refers to the synagogue of Satan and those who, who pretend to be Jews but are not. Um, and that can be taken, I think, in two ways. First of all, one, for, you know, because the new Israel is, is the church, is Christians, those who profess to be Christians but are not. But then also on the flip side, those who pretend to be of the Hebrew descent who, who are not. You know, the, the Ashkenazi are not the bloodline of, of David. So I, I would say that uh, that could be taken in two different ways in Scripture. Mm. Well, uh, <laughs> the prophecies of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, basically outline who the Israelites are. They are alive and well. They are those in whom would have an enemy, it says, come from a far country and take them from their country to a land in which they knew not they would be uh, enslaved they would have their children taken from them and they would be sold to other slave masters and there would be no power in the hands of their parents to do anything about it their women and the men would f fall out with each other. That's prophesied as well. And the man would walk away from his responsibilities. And the women also would do the same thing. As well as they, it says something very key that this nation, which is the enemy of the Israelites, would put a place of a yoke of iron around their necks. And now, if, and also, it says that this people will go into captivity by way of ship. Now, when you do the simple research, you find that those people can be identified as so-called black. Me. Well, and, what do I uh, say to that, though? If you look within, so if we're going to go on slavery being taken by ship, families being destroyed, you look at what happened in Ireland under Oliver Cromwell where the mass internment of Irish people, people being slapped in irons and sent to sugar plantations in Barbados, tobacco plantations, being sent to the New World. You look at impressment that happened in England where you could just be walking home trying to get home to your family after a hard day's work and someone would come up, whack you on the head with a stick, throw you in chains, and put you on a boat and say, now you're an indentured servant. So 
I mean, the problem is slavery is a human condition. I mean, you, you look at the millions of Irishmen and women who were taken from their homes, who were denied their faith, denied their culture. My people don't speak English because they chose it. They speak it because that culture was forced upon them through a genocide of native, native Irish culture. So what I mean, what I would say is you really look that this pain and suffering, that history doesn't repeat itself, but it echoes. That the suffering of many groups of people on this planet are very familiar. And it's an unfortunate nature of a fallen world. Hmm. That's interesting. It's, it seems to me that uh, Europeans want to place themselves in that region. But the region of, that's why I spoke of Ethiopia in the beginning, or the actual name of what we call uh, Africa today, al or Ethiopia. The Garden of Eden is found in, so in the Bible. It's found basically in uh, Ethiopia. And there were no Europeans living there. There was no Irish, uh, no Scandinavians, no Germans, or the, the man of germs, or whatever, Germany, many Germans. There was, they were not there. That has nothing to do with them. As a matter of fact, that type of heat, they probably couldn't even stand at that particular point in time. <laughs> so there has nothing to do with them. See, that's, this, is, this, this is where we deal with Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. And I hate to keep continue to keep using these biblical scriptures, but I have to. Uh, Jeremiah the 16th chapter spoke very well and it says in I believe the 19th or 20th verse that the Gentiles would come from all the ends of the earth and they would have to admit to the true Israelite to the true chosen of the Most High, the one that is hidden in prison houses as in Isaiah the 42nd chapter said hidden away in prison houses which is us that one day you all would have to come and say that your fathers have inherited lies and this is exactly what's going to happen. Christmas is a lie. Put on us, not by Jews in school, but put on us by Europeans in school. You know damn well there's no such thing as some fat white boy flying around in the air, dropping no damn gifts, or going down no chimney head. A lot of us in our neighborhood didn't even have a chimney. But this is something that we have been told and it's reinforced every year in schools all across this country and it has nothing to do with Jews putting it out there or Zionists putting it out there. This is the curriculum that we get in schools every year for our children. And who they creates these curriculums? Well, it was not us. It was Definitely not, not us. It. Well, it who was, was it then? You look. The Zionists created, did you, are you going to tell me seriously that the Zionist Jews created the curriculum for the schools that we have today? We look who controls all of the mass media outlets in this country. There was a recent article in the New York Times. No, I'm not speaking of, I'm not talking about well, the mass media. I'm no, talking about the, in the, the school the system. Yes, in the publishing houses, which create the textbooks, if you look, those who are controlling the all of the massive media outlets, a recent article in the New York Times talked about a Jewish writer was discussing, just admit that Hollywood is Jewish. And he talked about how he couldn't find more than five Gentiles in even mid-level management in Hollywood in these companies. So you look, who creates the media? Who controls the publishing houses? Yes, almost unilaterally, it's controlled by Jews. So that is an undeniable fact. So if you want to ask, who is putting out these textbooks to push this curriculum? It's not us. And I would agree with you. Santa Claus and things like that, these cultural mores that have been created are not the Christian expression. But as Christ is removed from the classroom, as crucifixes even are forced to be covered up, in Christian schools, where we're seeing our faith removed from courthouse steps as the Ten Commandments are dragged away, then who are the organizations who are usually doing those lawsuits? Generally Jewish organizations, or predominantly run by Jews, such as the ACLU. So we see this new culture, which is increasingly secular, increasingly hedonist, and destroys the traditional Christian faith and its expression here in this continent and across the world, is not being pushed by Europeans. And I guarantee you, if we went and looked up right now, those who are on high-level management of publishing book houses to create those textbooks, we wouldn't find a lot of uh, European names, but we'd find a lot of Cohens and Goldbergs. Mm. Well, one thing I know is Europeans, I mean, Jews usually change their name to blend into society. Mm -hmm. so. I do know that. And I also know that you all have, they've mixed with you all so much, we, hell, we can't tell who's a Jew or who's, who's a European. Well, you look, Israel's right of return. I think would be a great way to determine. It's how the Jewish people determine their no, own. No, I mean, how do we determine us as so-called indigenous people? Today? How do we determine looking at uh, a so-called Jewish individual and a white? How do we determine? Because you all have mixed in. They've mixed in with you so 
deeply until we can't really tell by looking at them that there's a difference between them and you. Like when I look at you, I don't see blue eyes. Yep. I don't see blonde hair. Now some Europeans have green eyes, some have gray eyes, some have bluish eyes, some have bluish green eyes, some have bluish gray eyes. Goddamn. <laughs> All different types of colors of eyes. We don't know who is who. But I do know that the majority of all of the suffering that the majority that people of color receive on this planet usually comes from someone who looks like you or someone of your I can't say hue because there is no hue there. I'm no offense, but that's just the truth. <laughs> but uh, we usually the world is under uh, uh, the rule of what appears to be European. I'd agree, and that that is the ultimate problem that we face as a European people, because those who are controlling, I mean, you look what happens in Africa, where countries will get loans from international banking houses, and then the interest rates skyrocket, which forever create the cycle of poverty. It's not Europeans who control those banks. You look at the, the Federal Reserve, for instance, um, not a European who runs it. He might look to be of my color, but he's not of my folk. He's not of my people. That Jews are their own separate people, but because they look like us, okay. it's very easy to inter to intermix. And one thing I would just really want to note that you look at how, for instance, Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam has, I think, really done a good job at pushing this message of where looking at when when it comes to some of the books the Nation of Islam has put out on slavery, where they they trace the shipbuilders, they trace the people who finance the trips, the captains, things like that and how a very small percentage of the population, which were predominantly Jewish, created the chattel slavery system to bring Africans to the New World. So I think we need to look as two separate peoples and as two separate advocates for our communities that the scholarship is there. And it's much easier, for lack of a better term, to whitewash it as being the sins of Europeans. But I see both groups of people being used. Because when some farm boy from Arkansas goes over to Iraq to die, he's not dying for America. He's not dying for freedom. He's dying because the internationalists wanted someone to go and advance their agenda. So I would say it's as tragic as when someone from Chicago, you know, the, the ghetto of Chicago goes over to die as a white boy from, from Arkansas dies. That we are being pitted against each other and are being used as tools of the internationalists. And that can be the framework where I think white advocates and black advocates can really come together, not, not as friends, because we're two separate peoples, but at least with that respect to know that there is a common group who is trying to use both of us against one another. And mm. as we fight each other, we're not looking at the real problem. Okay, so let me ask you this question. I hear you saying that it's Jews, 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 Jews. So who was on these plantations all across this country whipping and beating people like myself? Was that Jews or was that your descendants? That was Europeans for the most part. Mm. But let, oh, us, okay. let us also remember and, and I hate to play this game, but at the time of the war between the states, 1.6% of the white population owned slaves. At the time of the war, one of the top five largest slave owners in South Carolina was a black man. Are we, are we going to honestly look and say that he never beat any of his slaves? The system, I do not support slavery. I think it's an insult to both whites and blacks because my family... What was that name of that black man? I don't know it off the top of my head, but I guarantee you, you, give me five minutes in a Google search, I can pull it up for you. Mm -hmm. Because you look, there were black slave owners. So what did he do to his slaves? It was a, who knows? Did he cut the testicles off of the males? Did he, homo did he homosexualize the boys? Did he have uh, homosexual uh, uh, sex farms like European males? Did see, one thing we don't, they haven't talked, I don't guess they told you this, but if you look at a movie called Goodbye Uncle Tom, in Good Bible Time, the, the director's cut, uh, you see that European males had sex farms with little boys, little black boys. It greased these little boys up, you know, some freakish European something where in the back damn woods or wherever the hell he was at, looking at these little boys. And they would sell these boys to other slave masters who would come in. European, wasn't Jews now, Europeans who so were actually doing a, a, this. A film that came out of Hollywood more propaganda? No, no, no. Where, here, here's the question. If there is something that is able to make it past propaganda? the media censors, and, and again, we can't fall into this trap where those who control Hollywood, they control the images that we see, the music that we listen to, 
all of our input in this society. Okay, so push you're saying agenda. that. Okay, so you're saying that. Okay, let me ask this question. Are there any true stories, anything that we can see in the media that is true? I would say that you have to look twice or three times to be able to verify that anything we see is true. Okay, well, I did that. I looked two, three, four, five, ten, twenty times, and it's the truth. It is the truth. This is exactly what has happened. As a matter of fact, the reason why I will accept this a little, a little, uh, I accept this a little easier than I would accept it from someone else is because of from a European, because this was a different type of European. This was a European from over there that actually did this story. See, when Europeans come from other countries, like from Europe or whatever, like RT News, people like that, that deal with stories that's coming with the real truth behind what the media would give us here. I tend to listen to what they say a little easier than I would the European born here, because to me the European here is a little bit different than the European over in Europe or whatever. And this came from these people, they told the story of how they actually treated our people when we got here. And you're not going to tell me that Roots isn't true. It's Alice Haley. That's a real true story. It really happened. There was a Kunta Kente. There was a Kizzy. There was a Bell. All this stuff took place. It, it, it did happen. And the thing is, when we sit down and have these discussions, it seems to me that Europeans just don't want to deal with the actual actual truth. And even Rosewood, that's, that's, I know damn well Rosewood took place in this country. I know, I know damn well also that there was a Black Wall Street and it was not bombed by Jews. Well, we had Black Wall Street, as far as I know, would, would have been a model for all of us. We already had separatism, as far as I'm concerned, when they had Black Wall Street. We were doing it. Before there was a civil rights, before we was begging to sit down in a restaurant and eat with you all or drink from a water fountain with you all, we had Black Wall Street. We were self-sufficient. But some Europeans, that's the problem, some Europeans decided that was just a little bit too much and they blowed it up. They bombed the people. The same thing like I said happened in Rosewood because a white woman said she was raped by a black man. The whole damn neighborhood of the town was destroyed. And lots of black males and women, females and children lost their life. And then it turns out that she was lying like a lot of European women do even to this day will get raped or whatever and then say a black male raped them. And then we as black men, see, have to deal with racial profiling or whatever, especially when a white woman says anything, we are in trouble. This is the way it's been. And see, this discussion is excellent that we had this discussion live in front of everybody. I wish the whole world could see it because this, this is exactly what needs to happen. We need to discuss this thing before it gets out of hand. But the, the problem is, I mean, you look at the FBI statistics for inter interracial rape, I would be very interested to see a, a production on that where you look at the numbers that of white men who rape black women, statistically, on the FBI's own website, is, is zero, which means 10 or less per year. Um, you look at black on white rapes, it's over 40,000. I mean, I think if you want to look at crime, now first of all, going back to slavery, slavery was tragic, slavery never should have happened, that's what happened when you put profit ahead of race, and when you dehumanize not only the black population, but you look at what slavery did to the white underclass, of which my family was a part of, that wages being destroyed, creating almost a slavery system for poor whites in the South. Um, so the big problem is slavery was a bad system. I don't support it. I wish we had never done it. But the dehumanization of what when people put money ahead of race, when they put it ahead of family, they put it ahead of church, horrible things happen. And that's something that we can all agree on. Uh, and I agree with you also that before the civil rights movement, then the black community had its own upper and middle class. It had lots of businesses. It, ha it was thriving. But what happened? When you force the mixture, that was destroyed in my own hometown. There were black owned businesses that went under when segregation ended simply because then all the black folks went to the white stores and the folk ties within the black community were disrupted from the businesses and the churches and then everyone was mixed together. So again, I think the best way to be able to help all of our peoples is to separate and re-get that system where we become self-sufficient. And of course, we can look and find examples of tragedy perpetrated by whites on blacks that is horrible, and I would never stand by actions like that. But on the same token, I guarantee you going through the history books, we can find plenty of examples of rape, plenty of examples of violence, all sorts of murders being perpetrated of blacks on whites. So instead of being, you know, I, I, I could get myself angry 
over violent acts perpetrated against my people a while ago. And even to this day, you can open the newspapers and my former alma mater, uh, Towson University, that just recently several students were held at gunpoint when a group of black men kicked in their doors, pointed shotguns at them and robbed them of everything. Several black men this past two weeks uh, sexually assaulted two girls on campus, raped them right there in, in, in public. So yeah, there's a lot of bad things going on. And again, that's why separatism solves these racial problems, but we can't lament tragedies being done only to blacks because whites have suffered at the hands of plenty of black men throughout the years. And this institutionalized system, which hits both of us against one another, is not being pushed by Europeans because it doesn't benefit us. Mm. Slavery did not benefit the white community because how can poor whites, middle class whites, compete with free labor? You can't. Well, uh, the song I hear on the commercial, Cotton, the fabric of our lives. Hell, I hear that co commercial all the time. Cotton, the touch, the feel of cotton, the fabric of our lives. God damn, I mean, we picked a lot of cotton and Europeans got filthy rich off that cotton. That's Carla. Go ahead, Carla. Mm -hmm. Roger, my name is Apologize. I don't find this policy. Uh, they keep on doing it to us anyway, Brother White. Uh, oh, God, some more earth, please, more tiny. Y'all doing a good job, Brother White. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Next caller. Caller, go ahead. Speak. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, years ago, I would think I would not have supported this guy, but today I support him with what you Caucasian is saying because. For profit prison is our re enslavement, and some black people even want to compromise for them to come and establish those prisons in our community. This is something that we cannot compromise on. This is something to be destroyed. We cannot afford to go on slavery again. And also, finding our own place in this continent will help us to establish commercial viability. Right now, we are under commercial asphyxiation with other people being in a community. For example, no one single black man in Chicago area owns a gas station. Gas station has a fractionated mineral that all these other people are benefiting from. And we should be ashamed that the Indians that came yesterday, a black man has to go to him to raise money for him so that he can be in the United States Senate. And finally, we got to get this straight. 90% of United States Senate is a Jews. And therefore, what impacts the black life in this country is true. And then don't let us leave it to Falakan alone to, to cash hair. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Uh, hello, brother. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning, brother. Uh, good morning to you, guest, uh, Mr. Uh, hi, uh, Okay, uh, Matthew. <laughs> Pleasure, sir. Okay, uh, uh, Matthew, I listened to you, uh, and I agree uh, with uh, what you were saying about uh, international jury and Zionism, mm -hmm. and uh, how it's behind uh, uh, basically all the world uh, ills right now. Okay, but I have a question to you because you said uh, something about Bolshevism being responsible for suppressing your people's religion. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, who was behind Bolsh uh, Bolshevism? Was it not Jews? Yeah, of course it was Jews. You actually look at... Um, I can't hear him too good. Yeah, he said yes. Yes. Um, okay, well, then, okay, because I agree, because also Zionism and Jews was behind slavery mm -hmm. and our people. Mm -hmm. Now, the question I have for you, uh, Matthew, is, okay, when you say uh, allow you to practice your religion, what is your religion and from what book are you using as a foundation for your religion? I would like to get back to Deuteronomy 28. Well, I, I myself am an Orthodox Christian, um, so you know you. Oh, I can't hear him too good. Uh, he said he's an Orthodox Christian. Okay, so I would assume that you're relying upon the uh, Bible as a foundation book to yes. support your uh, religion. He said yes. Oh, okay. Now, go on back to the book of uh, Deuteronomy 28, chapter, and see how uh, uh, the why. But you asked him uh, specifically about uh, uh, the prophecies of uh, Deuteronomy 28. He shied away from it. He said something about they could be all of skin, all this kind of stuff. When you look at the prophecies of uh, Deuteronomy 28, which is a curse that come upon Israel as a people if they did not follow the commandments of God, okay, it's specifically all of these prophecies are aimed towards black people who were spread throughout the diaspora. 
Right. It's not toward the Irish people. Now, when we talk about uh, Irish people and their religion, okay, it's pagan in origin. Because I, I, have, to add, I have to add, uh, Brother Matthew, when we look at the uh, uh, pagan celebration of Halloween, would you not agree that uh, that traces back to the Celtic people? I, I would, and that's actually why, as an Orthodox Christian, uh, a lot of the westernized um, pagan traditions that were a synthesis through folk religions and the Roman Church, uh, we reject. We say, you know, our Easter is not on the feast day of Ishtar, who is a pagan European goddess. Our Easter, Pasha, But uh, what, Matthew, what do they have to do with uh, the god of this book? Well, I mean, what, what I would say is that the Orthodox faith follows the faith as it has been practiced for 2,000 years, and if we want to talk about who the real Israelites are, we also have to look in Scripture where it refers to Jews blushing. And um, I, I must say that I, I don't think many Africans blush in the way that, are, that was described, the reddening of the face in that way. That seems much more someone of a lighter complexion. Um, you know what, Brother Vidal, I'm having a hard time uh, being able to respond to him because I can't hear it. Okay, brother. Sorry for, sorry okay, for the... Okay, but I would just like to finally say that uh, the reason black people were suffering... Okay. I'm sorry we lost. Next caller. Thanks, brother, for the call. Call back if you can. Next caller. Yes. Yes. Hi. Peace. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, I'm just here to say, you know, he can say that his family didn't act, his people didn't actually participate in the process. But when they drank from the cup of white privilege or white supremacy, they did more harm to black people than any slavery system could have ever done. So we can't involve him. And so, oh, we come to to come to the table with you. We're going to sit down and talk with you and interact with you because you are part of the problem. You are not a part of the solution to African American people. That's the reality of it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the main thing here, uh, uh, Matthew, is that you you say that we need to separate, correct? Mm -hmm. I totally agree, and I, I've said that uh, several several times on previous shows that. Uh, we need to separate at the very at the very least. I think that we as a people have got to heal, uh, and, and we we just can't do it intermingling with you all. It's just not going to work. And we can go back and forth a, a million hours on this and that and that and this, and we're never going to come to uh, I guess a conclusion because it seems to me that some things are overlooked. Or you don't want to people. You all don't want to deal with the real atrocities that have really happened honestly and just admit that yeah we did this yeah we played this part yes 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 but anyway i do agree that there needs to be some separatism um, so that we as a people can go and heal ourselves from the atrocities we're still suffering from slavery mental physical uh, financial all these types of things and now they're trying to take us back into slavery like the little girl went to school and a little black girl went to school with locks in her hair and they sent her home and she was all in the news crying because she doesn't understand why she's sent home with, you know, with this type of, you know, hair or her, trying to follow her culture. It's just so many things that we cannot do. So I do believe uh, that at the very least we should separate. And I also, I, I do believe that um, that separation should take place as fast as possible. I would agree with you. When you look at, um we got like one minute left. So. Deal. Well, uh, cultural and demographic displacement, you look as a southerner, where our, our monuments are being torn down to our dead, where we can't even fly our own flag as a people because it's deemed offensive uh, to people above the Mason-Dixon line. So I would agree with you. We're, we're in a state where every culture is being pushed out, where you have to believe in this Americana, this idea, which destroys your racial ties, your religious ties, your cultural ties, that all cultures are being expunged from the American experience to create this generic McDonald's culture. So I would say, as a white southerner, and you as a, as a black man who is proud of your community and your heritage, the best way to preserve our integrity as a race, the best way to preserve our integrity as a people and our culture, is to separate, like you said, as fast as possible. Now you heard that from a European, not just me, okay? Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Uh, until you all see my face again, may the Most High take care of and protect you and yours. Peace and shalom. Is anybody listening? Mm -hmm. I wonder, can you hear me? 
mm-hmm. a voice in the wilderness. Uh-huh. I wonder, can you see me? Trouble is on the land. Every man against every man. Sister, I wonder, can you stand? Come here and take my hand. 